previously on Familiar Faces. I hate when people talk during the movie. And now the conclusion. I was frozen today! Hey, you remember this little guy? Of course you do. That's why today's episode isn't about him. No, we're going back a little further, to another once popular canine spokesman. That's right, it's Spuds McKenzie. For those who don't remember, during Super Bowl 21, Bud Light ran a commercial featuring a cool bull terrier who makes the Dos Equis guy look like a homeless bum. To say the least, he was a huge success. Bud Light found a great spokesman, and Spuds initially set the ever-rising bar for catchy Super Bowl commercials. Easy boy. A cute character, hot girls, and freaking Robin Leach. He's Spuds McKenzie, one party-loving happening dude. How can you go wrong with the announcer from Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? And oddly enough, a dog is not the weirdest subject Leach has had to cover. He has the trappings of a rock star, the possessions of a mighty mogul, and the unique style of the one and only Randy Macho King Savage. Little did I know as I entered his secret kingdom that total obedience is demanded by the monarch who stuck raving bonkers. You're going nowhere. But you know why Spuds McKenzie is so cool? It's because he shows up to places where people would normally be too self-conscious to bring booze. But strangely enough, never a dog show. Oh god, this is so boring! I need a beer! Another thing I love is how cheesy the commercials are. Nowadays, making a dog talk is the easiest and most common thing you can do with computer animation. In fact, the textbook goes, Chapter 1, a ball. Chapter 2, penguins. Chapter 3, ants. And finally, Chapter 4, dogs. Looking back on these commercials, now I know we've been spoiled. By the way, because Spuds just sits there and stares at the camera most of the time, it's up to these three women, also known as the Spudettes, to really sell the bit. That's okay, it's fun to pretend. Spuds is like the Santa Claus for staggering drunks. Yeah, I know you're not the real Spuds McKenzie, just one of his helpers, but I could really use a brewski. And they're probably the best actresses they could find. Bye, Spuds. Call me. Spuds' artificial popularity was soon by legitimate popularity, with one of every kind of merchandise you can think of. However, things hit a snag when the public learned the McKenzie's secret. He, in fact, was actually a she. <laughs> right, and I'm Cindy Lauper. But... Wait a minute, are those what I think they are? I'm sorry. Where do you get off having tits? It was a kind of controversy, but one of those pointless ones, like choking on a pretzel or having to constantly show off your birth certificate. But I can see how it could change the dynamics of the commercial for some people. Now it's just four girls. And you know how that is. They get all ready in the mirror with their friends, they're like, I just, I need to go, I just need to dance. <laughs> I'm serious tonight, no guys, screw guys, I just need to, I've had a rough week and I just need to just dance it out. I just want to stand in a circle around our pocketbook and shoes and just, I just want to dance. And I did find this picture on the internet. So apparently someone held a grudge for the 10 years between the commercials and the invention of Photoshop. But I'm personally disturbed by Spud's real name. Honey Tree Evil Eye. That's right, Honey Tree Evil Eye. She must have been owned by the guy who writes the Mad Libs. As if this nationwide reverse crying game wasn't bad enough, Bud Light also got a lot of heat from watchdog groups like the CSPI and the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. They claim that Spud was peddling beer to our nation's youth. Now I have the greatest respect for organizations like MAD. And what's not to like? Sure, they'll take away your beer, but they'll probably replace it with a freshly baked pie. Back to the point, I really can't agree with the protest because dogs aren't exclusively a kid thing. Almost everyone likes dogs. 
And even if a kid sees the commercial, I've got to think that they'd be more impressed by Spud himself than the actual product associated with him. It's like, why would I want throat burn tummy ache pee pee juice when I could have a pole vaulting guitar playing submarine dog? And they did run commercials like this. There's a reason why wherever he goes, Spud McKenzie has so much fun. He's always in control. Spud knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Be a good sport. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. So Spud knows how to drink responsibly, but he's still bad. Meanwhile, Spider-Man is snapping necks, melting faces, and making deals with El Diablo, but he's mom approved. What? What? I wasn't doing anything! On the other hand, beer is the kind of thing adults turn to when their childhood fantasies don't come true, like owning a Paul Volting guitar playing submarine dog. That's right, getting drunk every night, photoshopping fraud over your shattered dreams. So, there was an investigation with the FTC, and big surprise, they found no evidence of a conspiracy to encourage the use of alcoholism to minors. However, Bud Light did stop producing Spud commercials, because apparently they felt even though there was no evidence to back it up, people would still continue to say that Spud was a pusher. So, Honey Tree was retired in 1992, and died a year later from kidney failure at the ripe old age of 70. In dog years, of course. But the legacy of Spuds McKenzie lives on in parodies and jokes. Hey, look everybody, it's Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> and that's Spuds McKenzie. Good dog. Good dog. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>